Okay. So I hope uh, you are able to see my PPT. So in our previous session, we were uh, discussing on questionnaire. So our uh, main topic here is uh, the various sources of uh, data, types of data, how we can collect data, what are the different ways, techniques, tools to collect the primary data. So that is what uh, is our discussion. So as we are discussing research methodology, in research, we are supposed to collect data. And uh, in uh, many cases, we may have to involve primary data. We may be involved in collection of primary data. So how this primary data can be collected? What are the different ways in which it can be collected? What are the different techniques? So that is what we have been discussing. And uh, we have discussed uh, about questionnaire. So what is questionnaire? And uh, what are the different types of questions that we can include in questionnaire? Uh, what are the different steps involved in uh, designing questionnaire? So these are the things that we have discussed previously. And we will continue with that session further. So when we are talking about uh, questionnaire, so there is a similar tool of primary data collection, which is called as uh, schedules. Schedules and questionnaire. You know, uh, sometimes people uh, uh, see it as same, but it is not same. It is different. Schedule is different. Questionnaire is different. So what is schedule and how it is different from questionnaire, we will discuss about it. And maybe we will discuss some other techniques of uh, primary data collection also. Uh, so we'll see as what is schedules. So schedules are similar to questionnaire. They are very similar. In what sense? Questionnaire contains some questions related to the topic, right? We have certain set of questions in questionnaire. And in schedule also, there are questions. Okay, there are questions in uh, schedule also. In that way, they are similar to questionnaire. Here in schedule, the questions, the answers are filled by the enumerators. Enumerators are the persons who are appointed to collect data for the schedules. Okay, enumerator are the people employed for collection of data to schedules. They are called as enumerators. So it is filled. Whereas in questionnaire, what we do, we hand over the questionnaire to the respondents. Most of the times, we hand over the questionnaire. OK, so here in the process of collection of data, questionnaire is different and schedule is different. In questionnaire, you may, most of the times, we hand it over to the respondents to fill it. And maybe sometimes we uh, ask the questions and we fill it on our own uh, based on the response of the respondents. So that also happens, but it is less uh, cases. In, uh, and these days we see that you know when uh, people are using Google Forms, so through Google Form questionnaires will be sent. But here the schedules are filled by the enumerators. So that is the di one difference that we can see in questionnaire and. Uh, schedule but only certain cases uh, the schedules may be handed over to the respondents here the enumerators are selected very carefully it is not that anyone and everyone can uh, become an enumerator so how it is they need to have certain characteristics they need to have certain features the enumerators should be intelligent they should be they have to be knowledgeable because in some cases, when the uh, questions in the schedules are not very clear to the respondents, it will have to be explained to them. There may be cross examinations to get more clarity of data. So in that sense, the uh, 
the enumerator should be intelligent they will have to cross exam they have to be honest because the data that is collected should be you know uh, reliable and the enumerator should be honest uh, we, so that we can you know depend on them sincere they have to be sincere hard working and have patience look a very good example for schedule e is uh, when government of india government of india conducts census i hope you know okay every once in 10 year uh the government of india conducts census so what does hap what what is that what is the process so here uh the government collects information of each and every household of the population so every you know state every district every municipality every locality there will be enumerators identified and these enumerators are given schedules okay schedules are handed over to them and they go to you know each and every residents and collect the data about uh, the number of family members their age their education their uh, spoken language so many you know details are collected that is for the purpose of the government so that is a census so here the instrument they use is not a questionnaire it is called a schedule so normally schedules are having more number of questions compared to a uh, questionnaire and the process of collecting data also is different as we said that there is a, a enumerator involved here so who uh, collects data for the government in the census it is normally the government school teachers the government school teachers are employed as enumerators to collect data through schedules in the case of census that is conducted by government so there that is called as schedule the instrument that they have it may be you know one page or two page uh, it will be normally more than one page big uh, you know two three pages it will be there and it will have several questions related to the house which will be collected and it will be sent to the government so uh, so that's why why government teachers are selected because they are intelligent they are educated they are intelligent obviously they have the ability to cross exam they are honest teachers are considered honest sincere hard working and they have patience because they will have to go around all the houses in that particular region which they have been allotted so several kilometers they will have to travel in their uh, you know vehicle and some remote places they cannot go in the vehicle also they will have to walk so in that way you can see they are sincere they are hard working you know uh, they will not cheat in collecting data so that's why the enumerators are uh, you know collected and it becomes convenient for the government to employ the government teachers right so that is the instrument there they use is this called as schedule so that is uh, you know uh, the population census which i have just explained so schedules are very useful for extensive inquiries so extensive you need to collect lot of data so then schedule becomes a useful instrument and the uh, results are reliable so the, uh, the data that is collected through uh, schedules are reliable because uh, enumerator is involved and uh, we see that uh, enumerators are having certain characteristics so so by now i feel that you are clear about what is a schedule so we will see some other you know differences between the questionnaire and schedule now so difference between schedule and uh, questionnaire so this is one uh, you know common question that you can expect in exams okay what is the difference between questionnaire and schedule very often it comes in uh, you know uh, exams final exams and uh, even internal exams you can expect this question for 7 marks or 10 marks okay so that time you will have to highlight all these differences so questionnaire on the left side we have the features of questionnaire on the right side we have the features of schedule so normally questionnaire is sent through mail majority of the cases the questionnaire is sent through mail 
as we have the convenience of uh, you know uh, the internet social media so uh, it can be very easily sent through mail but here schedules cannot be done sent like that schedules are hard copies that is carried by the enumerators personally it is filled by the enumerators by asking the questions with the respondents so in that way it is different questionnaire is cheap it is economical compared to schedule compared to schedule it is much cheaper and it is economical but whereas schedule it is more expensive because it contains a lot of data you will have to have an enumerator say for example if you want to fill 1000 questionnaire 1000 questionnaire you can just send through social media or other media mails okay you one person is sufficient the researcher himself he need not employ anybody but as whereas schedules you will have for filling 1000 uh, schedules it will take lot of time and uh, manpower you will have to employ enumerators they will have to visit uh, thousand houses and then collect data so in that way it is more expensive non response is high in questionnaire the non response is high because uh, uh, as uh, you know you are sending through social media or uh, uh, email or even post if you are sending they can simply you know neglect it they may not bother to fill your questionnaire respondents may not some people may respond who are very close who know you if you just send it to random people or even your friends sometimes they may not feel it right so non response may be less here in questionnaire but whereas schedule uh it is low the non response is low people not responding to schedule is low why because a teacher or an enumerator who is a person responsible to collect data from the schedule will be visiting the house so you will not close the door is it not you cannot see find people closing doors that to when an enumerator who is known so people normally know about the teachers i am taking the example of the census okay the government census where they use schedule but don't think that schedule is only used by government it may be used by other uh, research also because we are familiar because we know something about uh, the census that's why i am telling about it okay so when uh, enumerators visit the house it is very rare that people will not respond to them so normally they will be given a chair they will ask even whether you want to have coffee or tea or some uh, snacks right they will inquire about that and they will give the information that is asked by the enumerator so in that way uh, the response for uh, schedule is higher non response is lower in the non response means people not responding okay so that is non response is higher in questionnaire and it is low in schedule that is people will be responding more for schedules respondents identity is not clear so in questionnaire it is not very important that you need to highlight the age or the name and other uh, you know details of the respondents it is just used for analysis research purpose there who is that person and all what is the number of family member what is the language those things are not very important in questionnaire and if the respondent wants to be keep it uh, confidential it can be kept confidential right uh so it does not uh, you know uh, contribute anything for the research the individual's identity whereas in schedule it is very important the name of the person the language that is spoken the religion uh, the you know number of family member the income the education all this is that the main uh, details that they collect in schedule okay that will be sent to the government so in that way it will be, it should be very clear in schedule very slow collection whereas questionnaire as it is sent through social media and mail say if you want to collect the same number of uh, you know large number say 1000 uh, questionnaires then it may take time more time whereas schedule when you are uh, engaging uh, 
people there animators they will have to visit houses and it will be much faster than questionnaire personal contact is less in questionnaire <coughs> whereas in collection of uh, schedule it is more personal contact is higher <coughs> Further, some more uh, difference between uh, questionnaire and schedule. We will discuss. Respondents have to uh, to be literate. Uh, to fill responses in questionnaire, the respondents have to be literate. They have to know how to write, how to read. Otherwise, they cannot fill it. But whereas in uh, schedule, it is not necessary because every question is asked by the enumerator and he or she is filling that so literacy is not important or not necessary in schedules wider and more representative sample coverage possible wider and more representative sample coverage so you can cover uh, more number of uh, you know samples uh, sample size uh, in and much easier so the process of collecting from large population is much easier in questionnaire because it is distributed electronically or through mail or through post like that. But whereas here it is difficult because people have to travel, they have to carry the uh, schedule with them, personally visit the houses and collect it. So in that way it is difficult. Risk of incomplete and wrong information is more. Uh, so as it is, uh, you know, sent as the questionnaire is sent through mail, chances are that that the respondent may not be very serious in filling the questionnaire. He may give some wrong information. If you want to just uh, finish something, finish the questionnaire and uh, you know send it, he may he may not fill uh, fully fill also. Chances are that. So if a questionnaire is not filled properly, then it has to be rejected by the uh researcher that is a different thing so chances of incomplete and wrong information is more in questionnaire but whereas in schedule it is less because a person is there he will ensure that the eliminator is there he will ensure that the data is filled properly success depends on the quality of questionnaire so here uh, you know the success of collecting data through questionnaire is mainly dependent on the questionnaire how well you design the questionnaire what are the different types of question you put? How you put that questions? So in all these factors influence the success rate of a questionnaire. Whereas here the success rate does not depend on the schedule, but it depends on the enumerator. So how well the enumerator clarifies the doubts and collects the data, it depends on him. Physical appearance of the questionnaire should be attractive. Because when in hand, when it is seen by the respondents through uh, soft copy or hard copy, it should be attractive. Attractive does not mean you have to give some designs and all, but the layout and uh, the font size, uh, line spacing, all these should be uh, you know clear and it should attract the uh, respondents to fill it. They should not find any difficulty in filling it. But whereas that is not very important or necessary in, uh, you know, uh, schedule because everything is asked by the enumerator and it is filled. So these are the differences in questionnaire and schedule. Then what are the other forms of data collection? In what are the other ways we can collect data? Uh, Observation we have discussed, questionnaire we have discussed, we have discussed experiments. Is there any other things that we can you know, collect data? Yes, there are other ways, techniques also. There is something called as warranty cards. Warranty cards, okay. So, these warranty cards are of postal sized cards. Postal sized cards. Card. I don't know how many of you have seen a postcard. By government Indian post office, there is something called as a postcard, right? Uh, right? It may be some, you know, uh, height may be about uh, three inches, 
width may be about four to five, four inches or five inches. So previously, before this, what social media, internet, smartphones, uh, people used to send lot of you know such uh, postcards for wishing birthday, sending uh, New Year wishes, festival wishes. So it is some you know uh, some uh, ten paisa, twenty five paisa. Then I'm talking about twenty years back, twenty five years back when uh, internet and uh, smartphones were not that popular say 30 years back 40 years back your parents would be knowing much better about postcards right so like that uh, so this was a common instrument uh, used by the people to send uh, you know small short messages for longer there were inland letters in a letter which you can write in your hand uh, about one or two pages and then post it that is different thing this is postcard okay so this warranty card is not postcard but it looks like postcard only. okay so and here there are various questions that is printed so you want to collect some data here so what what type of data you want to collect the name age education how 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 many times they buy soap if you are doing a research on soap right uh, how much they are willing to pay for the soap right whether they are satisfied with the soap like that whatever questions they want to put it here so uh, it is uh, you know the questions are typed there and uh, the respondents have to pick and post it back so this is called as warranty cards that is one uh, tool that is used so it is not i have not seen any warranty cards in the you know data as a data collection instrument uh, so in India it may not be that problem, but it is there. So that uh, tools are there. Then another one is distributor or store audit is another technique of collecting data. So here the data is collected from the store, retail store, retail store. Okay. So how many products are sold? How often products are sold? If you want to, uh, you know, find out. Which are those products that is sold faster? If you want to do a study on that, my voice is breaking for everybody. Is it some uh, internet technical problem may be there? Okay, so store audit is where store audit is where. Uh, the distributors or manufacturers visit a store, retail store, and they will see the quantity of the products in the shelf. In a retail store, there will be shelves are there where the products are kept. So, and also they may have some uh, store rooms where the you know goods are stored. So, an audit will be done by the manufacturers or distributors trying to see how many goods are sold so this and which are the competing brands why they will do that to estimate the market size they want to estimate what is the market size what is the market share seasonal purchasing so these are the you know, studies that is done through store audits okay so how they will do they are not asking any questions with the retailer or customer they are just studying through the observation observation is done what is the quantity of product okay uh, and it will be done periodically every week they will go and visit and see what is the quantity of the product that is being sold what is the quantity of product that is being purchased so all these data they will collect through observation only and it is done periodically every week they may collect every month they will collect maybe for one year they will collect maybe for two years they will collect so that is called as store audit then some other forms of uh, data collection pantry audits store audits are there similarly pantry audits pantry is the place in a house where you keep the grocery items food items storeroom in a kitchen some of the houses you will find a storeroom not every house will be having 
the new houses they don't have but slightly older houses you can see that there is a storeroom where they will keep all this uh, commodities uh pulses jaggery and uh, you know all this whatever is required which we know you know some houses you see that they will purchase for a week time for a month some houses they purchase for over six months the rice and commodities are purchased for six months and it is kept especially in the rural areas where the shopping is not very frequent okay they don't go uh, every week or uh, you know one, you know one or two three times in a week they don't go and purchase they go there they purchase for two three months and come back and store these goods in the storeroom okay so like that even in some cities we can find a uh, small storerooms where all these commodities are stored in the house so a visit to the houses and uh, a study of what are the different products that is purchased by the customers can be done through observation so what they do estimate the consumption of basket of goods basket of goods means what are the different product that is brought by a customer at once different products in a one visit so they want to study it they can visit the store storeroom of the house and study that they need not give a questionnaire and ask it they are just observing and collecting the data so in this they will collect the details of the commodities that is being consumed by examination of consumer pantry that is called as consumer pantry the storeroom okay study the consumer preference so which brand he prefers what quantity he buys what is his preference for the quantity like that so this is done on a single visit so they will visit several houses and observe the storerooms of the customers with their permission only okay they will ask permission and then they will visit so why like this if they are collecting data that is called as pantry audit then another type of collection is consumer panels consumer panels is an extension of pantry audits so in the pantry audit the visit is only once but in consumer panel it is repeated again and again it is repeated over a period of time that is they will visit every week for maybe they will visit every they will visit the customers uh, storerooms on a regular basis every week they will visit for 6 months 1 year and the houses are fixed they will have they will speak to them and they will say that we are doing a research and we will visit your house and uh, visit your storerooms and we will observe the products that you have bought for a one year time so the same customers they will visit again and again so that is called as consumer panel interviewed repeatedly over a period of time they may be asked about the products that is been bought okay transitory consumer panel is where the consumer panel changes the consumer panel changes the type of you know the consumer houses they visit they may change that is called as transitory consumer panel continuing consumer panel is the consumer uh, whom they are visiting they remains the same so that is called as consumer panel then other forms of data collection further uh, some cases you know you will have to collect data uh, you know some qualitative uh, aspects some uh, aspects related to the psychology say attitudes behaviors perception all these things you cannot collect through questionnaire you can collect but the accuracy of the data may not be uh, you know that high many things you know consumers cannot you know orally express through a questionnaire so what is their uh, you know feelings emotions what is their attitudes towards the product the brand you know all these things the personality individual personalities cannot be measured through uh, a questionnaire so you will have to use uh, other instruments where you will study their uh, state of mind attitude interests right all the preferences all these things 
so that time you will have to use mechanical devices so there are certain mechanical devices where data are collected something like eye camera eye camera is a, a camera which studies the movement of eyes movement of eyes so the psychology says that you know your eyes will uh, be a reflection of what you are thinking right so the movement of eyes will show as you know you are interested in what whether you are interested whether you are not interested right which like that so it will focus on the eye of the audience and it will measure what he is interested in or not right so that is eye camera may be used there is another device that is called as pupillometric camera pupillometric camera pupillometric camera measures the uh the eyeball eyeball uh, you know every you know you, you know that eyeballs are there so these eyeballs expands and contracts expands and contracts so it depends on your state of mind your emotions if you are interested maybe the eyeballs expand more if you are not interested your eyeballs will contract so like that for every emotion there is certain changes that happens in the eyeball which is called as pupil pupil it's called as pupil so there is a camera that observes these changes in the eyeball so this eyeball changes you can very clearly identify in a cat cat if you have seen in the house your house if you have a cat you see the size of the pupil of a cat in the night what is the size it will be larger in the daytime bright sun day afternoon you see that it will be very small very thin the eyeball so there it is expanding based on the light okay human eye will not change that much pupil but it will change to a certain extent based on your emotions so that is what the psychology says so so that you know researcher use such type of camera to identify the emotions of the audience then psychogalvanometer psychogalvanometer measures the emotions of a individual by the use of a uh, certain device called as psychogalvanometer where the body is plugged to various uh, you know plugs you may have heard about ecg ecg test in medical uh, hospitals is done to test the health of the heart have you ever seen it maybe some of you are you know known people if you have done it or you have seen it in some movies okay where you know some plugs are switched to different parts of the body especially the chest part stomach area lungs area all these places they plug it and it is connected to a device where it shows the health of the heart the blood circulation from the heart similar type of device is used where it measures your emotions okay then motion picture camera nothing but cctv camera is used for the uh, behavioral observation then audio meter audio meter is a device that is fixed to a television of the respondents every household for the wherever the consumers are ready to give the information for their television this particular audio meter is fixed okay and then the data is collected on what purpose the number of tv program that is viewed by this people how many tv programs programs they are watching how, what is the duration of the program they are watching so the, all this detail is collected by this audio meter and is transmitted to the main server maybe some thousand people this audio meter is fixed to their uh, television and it collects the data so they will measure uh, which channel is watched what time they watch which serial they watch 
all this data is collected there through this audio meter so that is about uh, the various uh, you know um, type of uh, data collection techniques so i feel that for today that is enough and in the coming session we'll discuss on another type of data collection that is project to techniques so till now if you have anything that you want to ask you can ask if you have any doubts 